-hmm. let me uh, briefly talk about the, the outline uh, that I will have. Uh, I will talk about tire sustainability, eco-friendly fillers, styrene butadiene rubber, fly ash and pyrolyzed torrified biomass fillers, and then uh, conclude uh, the talk after that. So let's talk, uh, start with tire sustainability in general. Uh, styrene butadiene rubber or SPR uh, is our main material is a synthetic rubber widely used in tire industry owing to its excellent abrasion resistance and stability. Carbon black or CB is used as an important reinforcement filler in rubber industries, especially uh, in tires. And the reason for that is, is that uh, it improves mechanical properties and hardness, conductivity, cure rates, and many other uh, uh, properties uh, of uh, 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 rubber uh, materials, rubber compounds. But at the same time, uh, CB is relatively high, uh, has relatively high production costs and dependence on fossil fuels. And it releases carbon dioxide to the atmosphere during the production of, uh, 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 during this production, uh, which aggravates global warming. Tire industry insiders predict a surge in silica usage in tires during the coming years. Due to the rising environmental concerns, regulatory bodies have been giving incentives to both manufacturers and consumers to use performance tires. These factors have led to an increase in the production of high performance and green tires. As such, in recent years, silica has been used as an alternative filler to CB in tires. The adoption of silica in the production of green tires has reduced CO2 emissions by almost 7% and increased vehicle fuel efficiency. CB is produced uh, using an oil furnace uh, process. Uh, and this increases the carbon footprint. A solution to this problem is a CB replacement by eco-friendly fillers. Partial replacement of CB by fly ash or FA or pyrolyzed biomass is uh, the topic of my uh, presentation today. So uh, let's talk about uh, the main eco-friendly uh, fillers that I'm gonna uh, talk, uh, present today. Uh, first, uh, we can obtain them from biomass. Uh, the most common form of biomass res uh, resources is lignocellulosic biomass, which removes CO2 from the atmosphere during its growth cycle. Lignocellulosic biomass can be grown from numerous types of plants, including sorghum, soybean, bamboo, wood, etc. Pyrolysis is a process which uses heat in a low oxygen environment to convert plant biomass into cleaner, renewable alternative and economical fillers for tire rubbers. Overall, the process of biomass generation and conversion into carbonized fillers is considered to be carbon neutral owing to CO2 removal during the generation cycle. Thus, the low density and low cost properties of pyrolyzed biofillers, coupled with recycling concern, render them attractive fillers to be used as reinforcement for SPR in tires. Secondly, uh, fly ash uh, is, a, uh, is a byproduct of power generation industries neglected for many years as a potential filler in many different commercial products, including rubber based products. Nearly 41% of electricity is generated by coal combustion, which is predicted to reach 44% in 2030. Fly ash uh, is unavoidably produced as waste after combustion. About 250 million tons of fly ash are produced annually, but only 39% is reused in the US. If fly ash is emitted to the environment by air and wind, a serious pollution problem would be created with the risk of pulmonary diseases and reusing the fly ash therefore is an efficient way to prevent such pollution. Styrene butadiene rubber uh, uh, is uh, of course an important component for uh, pneumatic tires, uh, part of which is shown here on the left. Uh, these are composed, as you know, of external surface called tread, uh, which is the outer uh, shell, as you see here, 
under which resides a reinforcement belt consisting of steel cords. Thread is the part which directly contacts the road surface and thus needs to be strong enough to avoid cracks or tears. In addition, reducing rolling resistance is very important to thread because rolling resistance is related to fuel consumption with higher rolling resistance resulting in higher energy loss. Thread is made up of a, of a rubber compound. There are two main types of rubber, uh, synthetic rubber and natural rubber. Natural rubber is collected from mature rubber trees in tropical areas and its production is limited. Styrene butadiene rubber is a synthetic rubber which is polymerized by using the monomers styrene and butadiene. SPR has become one of the most important synthetic rubbers in the world because of tire applications. SPR rubber ex uh, exhibits good abrasion resistance and stability, which is the reason why SPR rubber is usually used in tire thread, but it needs to be reinforced by carbon or and or silica-based fillers. And as I mentioned, the fly ash is produced from the combustion of coal in the power uh, station uh, with the uh, uh, the the, uh, for, uh, the pictures here depicting how it's generated, collected, and cooled down. So these two fillers, uh, therefore, uh, as I showed in the previous slide in this uh, slide in this uh, uh, graphical abstract here, uh, the biomass or fly ash uh, can be collected, and uh, uh, for the biomass, it can be uh, pyrolyzed and uh, then can be ground also and added to the, to the uh, compound in the compounding process for rubber, which is then ultimately molded into tire. Now, uh, let's talk about the chemical uh, makeup of fly ash. Uh, the table here shows the component uh, uh, that uh, exists in fly ash, uh, but, uh, but I would like to uh, uh, emphasize mostly the top uh, row here uh, which is shown by yellow. Uh, what it uh, indicates is that uh, for the four types of fly ash that are commercially available uh, uh, today uh, in the U uh, US, uh, uh, three of them uh, uh, consist of silica by more than uh, 50%. And the fourth one actually is about 36%. So you can see that uh, fly ash, uh, is ma made uh, a majority uh, of silica. Uh, therefore, adding fly ash uh, pretty much tantamounts to adding silica uh, to the compound. We have done uh, several experiments uh, to see the efficacy of adding these uh, fillers to, the, to SPR. And here I'm gonna uh, just briefly summarize uh, some of these processes. As I mentioned, uh, the particles uh, can be uh, ground. Uh, mostly we use bowl meal, tre bowl meal treatment uh, uh, as shown on the left. And then uh, they, are, uh, they are added to the uh, masticated rubber by compounding. Here I, we are showing a simple uh, bench type uh, equipment, but of course tire pro uh, producers will have much larger equipment. We are interested in uh, looking at the effect of adding these uh, into the compound as far as cure time for vulcanization is concerned. That can be done by TGA or DSC, and we watch the exotherm uh, in, in the output as the uh, 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 compound crosslinks. Uh, and the benchmark is T90, which is 90% conversion uh, during uh, crosslinking. So we look at the time that it takes for T90. And the uh, vulcanized uh, material then can be molded into either a tensile coupon shape or uh, as I will show you a, a fiber pullout uh, uh, shape for measuring adhesion uh, uh, by using a compression molding uh, machine. Now for the fly ash, uh, the, uh, the, the compound makeup or the recipes, uh, we, we tried two different recipes, recipe A and recipe uh, B. Uh, this uh, involved uh, replacing uh, mostly carbon black uh, for with recipe A by fly ash, and recipe B uh, involved replacing uh, the major comp uh, component, uh, which uh, which we use as silica, uh, by by uh, fly ash. 
this uh, uh, recipe B also still included about 4% rubber, 4% carbon black uh, for vulcanization purposes. So you can see uh, again, recipe A, uh, we have uh, majority carbon black going from 50 PHR down to 40, fly ash going from zero up to 10 PHR. And for recipe B, the major component is silica going from 50 down to 40 and the fly ash going from up from zero to 10. And in recipe B, we still had the four PHR carbon. We also, uh, as I mentioned, the tensile testing to look at the mechanical properties by using uh, a mechanical, a universal mechanical testing machine. Another important uh, experiment that we ran was to look at the adhesion strength, even though uh, we added uh, these uh, 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 filler is mostly earmarked for the tread, which does not have any re, uh, any cord reinforcement. Cord reinforcement will be in the carcass of the uh, of the uh, tire, uh, uh, as I showed you on the left here, and the deeper part of the uh, of the tire. Uh, but we still looked at the adhesion properties. This we did by using a, a, a variation of the pullout test, whereby we embedded a steel cord into uh, rubber uh, parts. Uh, here, uh, it, the, uh, the pull-out section is on the top. It's embedded about an inch into the section, and then it's pulled out. You can see here it's pulled out, and we measure the force uh, at that pull-out uh, 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 event. Uh, the uh, embedded length is ke uh, kept constant. So we uh, basically report uh, maximum force divided by this embedded length. Another very important issue for tires, uh, well, uh, there are two issues actually, are uh, the wet grip and rolling resistance. We evaluate these by using dynamic mechanical analysis and measuring tan delta, which is the ratio of G double prime to G prime. The wet grip is uh, uh, discerned by doing, uh, measuring tan delta at zero degree centigrade. And in this case, we want the tan delta to go up with the addition of fillers. So that would uh, tell us that we have good wet grip. For the rolling resistance, we measure tan delta at 60 degrees C, and uh, we want the tan delta to go down for less energy uh, wastage. So the rolling res resistance is decreasing if the tan delta is decreasing. Now, I mentioned that uh, we do bowl, mill uh, bowl milling to uh, grind the uh, material. Uh, we are focusing on class F particles of, of the, out of the four that I showed you earlier. Uh, as received, they are spherical, uh, smooth uh, shapes, uh, but uh, larger uh, in size. And when we bowl uh, mill uh, treat them, they reduce in size, but they acquire irregular shape as shown uh, in, the, in this uh, SEM picture. The scale marks are shown at the bottom of the uh, 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 photos. So uh, out of these four different uh, fly ash materials, uh, we can see that all of them uh, got reduced in size. Uh, some of them uh, almost, uh, you know, uh, by 40% or so, and some of them less, but there was a reduction in the uh, size uh, given here in terms of micron. Now, we, I mentioned that we measure the cure time by using uh, the uh, TGA or the uh, C. Uh, we, re we noticed that uh, by this experiment, uh, the addition of the uh, fly ash uh, did not affect uh, uh, much. Uh, the ones uh, that were uh, uh, mostly uh, uh, silica or base, uh, based on silica. There was uh, some increase uh, with the carbon. Uh, so this is uh, recipe B with recipe A. So addition of fly ash increased T90 due to uh, uh, silica and uh, fly ash. Uh, and sil uh, recipe B exhibited higher T, uh, T90 due to higher content of uh, silica. As far as tensile strength is concerned, the tensile strength uh, was either uh, pretty uh, steady or uh, constant or got reduced uh, uh, slightly uh, with the addition of the fly ash. 
uh, but this this reduction uh, should not be considered a drastic reduction and should not uh, affect uh, the performance of the tire. For elongation at brake, uh, we actually had uh, some increase in elongation uh, at brake with the addition of the fly ash. So that's a, a good result for us. Uh, modulus uh, uh, velocity at 100% uh, uh, strain also got reduced uh, somehow following the same trend as we, did, as we saw with the tensile strength. Uh, but again, uh, this reduction uh, was not excessive. The adhesion strength uh, to steel cord got reduced uh, for both recipes, as you can see uh, here. Uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, the silica-based uh, material, the recipe B, uh, had uh, uh, higher uh, adhesion strength, but also showed uh, uh, larger uh, decrease. Uh, we note that silica can absorb copper ion in the interface, thus improving adhesion for recipe B. Now, the, for the important part uh, for rolling resistance and uh, wet grip, uh, we can see that uh, we had good results for both cases. We had the rolling resistance uh, uh, got uh, reduced with the addition of uh, fly ash. Uh, and you remember that we want this to go down. So uh, it, it went down. And uh, for the uh, recipe B, uh, it actually remained uh, pretty steady, which is also a, a good result for us. So these two important uh, uh, parameters for tires uh, turned out to be uh, acceptable for us. Uh, uh, for the, uh, uh, so, so this was for the rolling resistance uh, for the uh, recipe uh, uh, B and recipe A. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, recipe, uh, uh, yes, for the rolling resistance for recipe uh, A and recipe B. For the wet grip, uh, we can see that we had good results for uh, both uh, recipes. The, the wet grip uh, improved as the 10 delta increased, as you can see from these results. So, uh, so that, that was uh, uh, a good result. In fact, uh, adding fly ash to silica uh, helped. Uh, uh, you can see here that uh, silica uh, without fillers uh, gives us uh, less fit grip, but add, by adding the fly ash, we improved that situation. So for both recipes, we had very good results. Now, let me talk about uh, pyrolysis of biomass. Uh, uh, a specific form of pyrolysis process for biomass is called torrefaction, which is typically applied between 200 and 300 degrees C in a low oxygen environment to convert biomass into higher quality and more attractive products. A low heating rate, less than 50 degrees C per minute, is typically applied in this technology to reduce operating costs and to provide a higher yield for uh, solid products. So we uh, obtained uh, torrefi uh, uh, pyrolyzed uh, so uh, soybean hulls from a commercial kiln uh, and we, which, uh, we, who used uh, four different uh, temperatures, 275, 325, 450, and 500 degrees C. They use four minute residence time. So this wasn't a torrefaction process, but actually uh, reduced the cost by using less time in pyrolysis. You can see that the, uh, the volume of the mass, uh, biomass got reduced drastically and the carbon content increased drastically. I'm gonna report on two different batches, one at 450 degrees C, batch A, and the other one 500 degrees C for batch B. Uh, we observed these uh, particles by using a scan electron microscope uh, and uh, the mean sizes of bowl-treated uh, bowl PSPH were calculated and the distribution uh, for the untreated PSPH was obtained by using the proper sieve, uh, uh, sieves uh, on the sieving machine. You can see that uh, as received, uh, the carbonized uh, PSPH has uh, large, rather large particles, 
in the order of hundreds of a micron. This might be applicable for some applications like uh, some people use for uh, fencing, uh, why use high density polyethylene, they add this into uh, those kinds of materials. Uh, but uh, especially for tire application, they can be bone milled to reduce the size drastically. You can see we could reduce the size below micron or in, in almost into the nano range as you see in here uh, well, by these numbers. You can see again, uh, as received large uh, particles, pretty uniform uh, in shape. And when we grind them, uh, the, uh, the size goes on drastically, but we have irregular shape. Cure time, uh, as we saw with uh, fly ash, uh, was increased for both uh, batches with the addition of the uh, PSBH. Uh, uh, the uh, cure time for ball mill PSBH loading samples is slightly uh, longer than that those of the untreated ones due to the increase in surface area. The tensile strength for these two batches, again, follows similar trends to uh, FA. There was uh, some reduction in the tensile strength for both, uh, both uh, batches uh, at two different pulling speeds, but these are, we don't consider this uh, a very drastic uh, decrease. The uh, strain at break uh, either remains steady uh, or uh, increase slightly. So uh, again, uh, that's not an uh, alarming result. Uh, moduli at 100% uh, strain uh, got reduced as we saw with FA, but not uh, very drastically. So again, this is not considered to be a drastic uh, change. Now, again, the all important uh, wet grip and rolling resistance, you can see that the addition of PSPH increased uh, the tan delta, which means that the wet grip resistance, wet grip increased. So that's something we want. And the rolling resistance decreased, which is something that we very much want because it saves energy. So these results were uh, fantastic for us uh, for the performance of PSPH. So in conclusion, I can say that silica, flash, carbon black rubber compounds exhibited higher mechanical properties and adhesion while rolling resistance was reduced. Ball mill treatment would improve the mechanical properties of carbon black fly ash rubber, but had reverse effect on silica fly ash carbon black rubber is attributed to aggregation of silica particles with ball mill treated fly ash particles. The best filler among the four types of PSPH is ball mill PSPH, uh, uh, batch A at 450 degrees C, and the optimum concentration was 5%. So that gives us the best uh, results. Cure time increased with the addition of PSPH because of the existence of acid groups on the surface of PSPH. And the results which uh, for torophysorium, which I did not present here ex explicitly uh, as filler, were however very similar to the ones I described and presented for the PSPH. So uh, we can also use sorghum and possibly some other biomass. Thank you for your attention.